Space Center in Houston. Good evening and good morning from the International Space Station Flight Control Room here at the Johnson Space Center in Houston, where at this hour, an unpiloted Soyuz MS-14 spacecraft is in the home stretch of its two-day rendezvous from the launch pad of the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan to what is expected to be an automated docking to the Poisk module on the space-facing side of the Russian segment of the International Space Station less than 45 minutes from now. This unpiloted test of the uh, Soyuz spacecraft is designed as a test flight that will pave the way for the use of a 2.1A Soyuz booster and an upgraded Soyuz spacecraft to carry crews to the International Space Station beginning next March. Here in the space station flight control room at this hour, the Orbit uh, 3 team of flight controllers is on console. Zeb Scoville, who is uh, the second uh, from the bottom of your screen in the gold tie, he is the NASA flight director who's in charge of tonight's operation from this end of the world, joined on console by flight director Adi Boulos and spacecraft communicator T Tamara York, who will be talking directly to the space station crew during the course of tonight's activities. The Expedition 60 crew is awake. Tonight's operation being controlled from the Russian Mission Control Center outside of Moscow in the town of Korolyov, where Russian flight controllers have been in charge since the Soyuz spacecraft reached orbit two days ago, eight minutes and 45 seconds following its launch from the Baikonur Cosmodrome. The Expedition 60 crew on board the International Space Station, the half dozen residents of the station are all awake at this hour, uh, led by Station Commander Alexei Ovchinin, uh, joined by NASA astronauts Christina Cook, Drew Morgan, and uh, Nick Haig, uh, European Space Agency astronaut Luca Parmitano, and the other Russian cosmonaut on board, Alexander Skvortsov. The journey of Soyuz MS-14 uh, began two days ago from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan with liftoff uh, right on time at uh, 10.38 p.m. Central Time, which was 8.38 a.m. at the Cosmodrome on Thursday morning. The Soyuz 2.1A booster, which has been used since 2015 to lift unmanned progress cargo ships to the International Space Station, was configured for this first test flight of the unmanned Soyuz spacecraft. It lifted off on time from Site 31 of the Baikonur Cosmodrome, arced out to the northeast, uh, toward an orbit inclined 51.6 degrees to either side of the equator, and the journey to the International Space Station was underway. Eight minutes and 45 seconds after this launch in a cloudless sky, 73 degree Fahrenheit temperatures in Baikonur, the uh, Soyuz separated from the third stage of the Soyuz booster after a flawless climb to orbit and uh, began an automated uh, series of engine firings to raise its orbit and fine tune its path to the International Space Station. Tonight's operation uh, in testing uh, the final phase of uh, the approach of the uh, modified Soyuz spacecraft to the International Space Station will be very interesting. The Soyuz systems are all in excellent shape uh, here in the uh, flight control team in Houston in the flight control room, the uh, Orbit 3 team of flight controllers uh, were polled a short time ago, and Flight Director Zeb Scoville uh, relayed to his Russian flight director counterpart in Korolyov that uh, we are go for docking, uh, which is scheduled just 41 and a half minutes from now. Unlike a progress vehicle, which uh, is equipped with a backup rendezvous system called the TORU system, that is the uh, acronym for the telerobotically operated uh, rendezvous system, the backup to the automated CORS rendezvous system. Uh, the CORS uh, is the primary rendezvous uh, capability uh, to guide uh, these Russian vehicles in for automated dockings to the International Space Station. Because there is no crew on board progress vehicles uh, that are cargo ships, uh, there is no TORU installed in tonight's Soyuz vehicle that is, again, under automated, automated approach on the core system for its docking a short time from now. As a result, inside the Russian segment of the International Space Station, Station Commander Alexei Ovchinin and Flight Engineer Alexander Skvortsov are uh, monitoring the approach of the Soyuz, uh, particularly after its fly-around and final approach, 
and if necessary can issue commands to the Soyuz to abort its approach in the highly unlikely event a problem would crop up with that core's automated rendezvous system. We do not expect that to happen. All of the Soyuz systems have been rock solid so far. No issues reported uh, as uh, the Soyuz enters the final phase of its two-day journey to the complex. The station is currently flying 260 statute miles above the Earth, flying from southwest to northeast, uh, currently uh, traveling almost directly over Buenos Aires, skirting the east coast of South America, soon to make a pass over the Atlantic Ocean and the west coast of Africa. Although there are no uh, human occupants on board the Soyuz MS-14, in the center seat normally occupied by the Soyuz commander is the humanoid robot called Fyodor. Uh, the Russian uh, space agency uh, has a more technical name, calling it Skybot. It uh, carried a Russian flag uh, in its right hand uh, during the climb to orbit two days ago. It will be brought on board the International Space Station next week for a series of experiments to be conducted uh, by Ovchinin and Skvartsov off before it is returned uh, to the center seat of the Soyuz in time for the uh, Soyuz undocking scheduled two weeks from now and its uh, parachute assisted landing on the steppe of Kazakhstan just as a crewed vehicle uh, would return to Earth. This Soyuz uh, spacecraft will be uh, analyzed post-flight, uh, all of the telemetry being conducted on its performance on board uh, to be evaluated by RSC Energia technical specialists before the green light is given for a crew to launch in a modified Soyuz on the Soyuz 2.1A booster next March. The next crew to launch to the International Space Station on September 25th, Alex Skorpochka, NASA astronaut Jessica Mir, and United Arab Emirates spaceflight participant Haza Ali Al-Mansouri, under a contract with uh, Roscosmos, uh, they will launch on the last Soyuz FG booster in the inventory from Yuri Gagarin's launch pad, the last scheduled launch of a crew from Gagarin's launch pad in the four foreseeable future. All of the 2.1A booster launches of future crews beginning next March will be off Site 31, which is a further uh, trek to the east of Site 1 from the uh, Site 254 suit-up and integration building facility at the Baikonur Cosmodrome. The uh, Soyuz MS-14 is uh, right uh, on the money about five and a half kilometers away from the International Space Station. It will be entering uh, the neighborhood of the station a short time from now to begin a fly around uh, about 16 minutes from now. It will be a fly around of about 67.6 .6 degrees in angle that will precisely align the forward docking port of the Soyuz MS-14 with the Poisk module to which it will dock uh, automatically. Uh, after docking, after contact and capture, there will be a few moments uh, to allow the relative motion of the two vehicles against their docking surfaces to dampen out against one another before the uh, docking probe on the Soyuz is retracted to initiate the closing of hooks that form a hard mate between Soyuz and the International Space Station. That will uh, be followed by about uh, two orbits worth or three hours worth of leak checks by Ovchinin and Skvortsov before the hatch to the Soyuz vehicle is open after the uh, station hatch on the Poisk side of the docking interface is opened first. Tonight's uh, docking of the Soyuz MS-14 to the International Space Station culminates a busy week that uh, not only saw the launch of this vehicle two days ago from Baikonur, that launch coming some nine hours after the completion of a spacewalk by NASA astronauts Nick Haig and Drew Morgan to install an international docking adapter to pressurized mating adapter number three on the Zenith or space-facing 
port on the uh, Harmony module of the International Space Station. That is the second of two such international docking adapters that will be the port of call for U.S. commercial crew vehicles in the years ahead. Uh, the SpaceX Crew Dragon vehicle and the Boeing Starliner CST-100 vehicle that will be launching soon to bring crews to the International Space Station. In addition to launches uh, on Soyuz vehicles, they'll be working in tandem uh, for uh, crew exchanges in the years ahead. This view from an external camera, the uh, engineering crosshair camera on the Soyuz MS-14. In the lower left-hand corner, you see 4.3635 kilometers. That's the distance uh, between Soyuz and the International Space Station. And the value underneath that is the rate of closure uh, of, at the moment, about 8.2 meters per second. At the time of contact and capture, uh, about 34 and a half minutes from now, uh, that uh, rate of closure will close to a glacial one-tenth of a meter per second to allow a gentle contact and the initiation of capture and the closing of the hooks between Soyuz and the Poisk module. The uh, Soyuz vehicle uh, that is arriving at the station today carries 1,450 pounds of cargo in uh, two bags that are flanking the humanoid robot uh, Fyodor. Uh, the uh, cargo to be brought on board the station uh, consists of standard supplies uh, for the uh, crew members on board the complex. Uh, the uh, Soyuz will be loaded uh, with other items to be brought back to Earth for its undocking on Friday, September 6th, and a parachute-assisted landing in the pre-dawn hours of Saturday, September 7th, Kazakhstan time, the afternoon of September 6th, U.S. time. Uh, basically the same type of landing that we've seen crews return to Earth in, uh, almost in the same exact area, about uh, 80 miles or so to the southeast of the remote town of Jezkazgan, on the south central steppe of Kazakhstan. At this point, uh, the uh, Soyuz uh, onboard computers will be executing a series of uh, so-called impulse burns of its engine. Uh, these are mid-course correction burns to fine-tune its path to the International Space Station. Uh, very uh, short uh, firings of the engine uh, to uh, increase uh, its uh, approach velocity and to uh, fine-tune its path up until the time that it reaches the vicinity of the station to begin its fly-around at a range of about 400 meters. The uh, space station uh, with the Soyuz in pursuit is uh, traveling just off the northeast coast of Brazil about uh, to transit uh, toward the uh, west coast of Africa that will carry it uh, just over Algeria and the Mediterranean. The Soyuz MS-14, uh, now less than 2.7 kilometers away from the International Space Station, closing at a rate of just under 8 meters per second, uh, right on course for an on-time docking. And again, uh, this uh, will culminate a, uh, the first phase, at least, of the uh, test flight of this uh, unpiloted vehicle in preparation for the start of uh, preparations for the March launch of a crew to the International Space Station on the Soyuz 2.1A booster. This is uh, the booster uh, that the uh, Russian Space Agency will be using to launch crews to the International Space Station beginning next spring uh, for the foreseeable future.
Even as uh, the Soyuz is approaching for its uh, automated docking to the International Space Station, preparations are underway for the departure of another visiting vehicle, that being the SpaceX Dragon vehicle that was launched uh, in July to carry several tons of uh, cargo and scientific experiments to the International Space Station. It is uh, mated to the Earth-facing uh, port of the Harmony module of the International Space Station. It will be detached from that port next Tuesday, August 27th, and uh, will be robotically released by robotic uh, flight controllers here in Mission Control uh, to uh, fly to a safe distance away from the International Space Station uh, for its uh, deorbit burn. Our coverage of its uh, release uh, will begin at 9.15 a.m. Central Time next Tuesday, 10.15 a.m. Eastern Time. The release itself is scheduled at 9.42 a.m. Central Time, 10.42 a.m. Eastern Time. It will be deorbited for a splashdown, a parachute assistance splashdown in the Pacific, about 300 miles to the southwest of Long Beach, California, several hours later. And it's a reverse uh, roll still, and the station is coming back into the center. Copy. 1,800 uh, meters is the current range. Copy. And uh, just uh, in the upper left-hand quadrant of this engineering view from the Soyuz external camera, that dot is the International Space Station, now just 1,700 meters away. Soyuz closing uh, on its expected approach uh, velocity of uh, just about 4.2 meters per second. Yuri, can we select between, can we close the uh, Sudan page and reopen it again, maybe to refresh it by doing that? Stand by one. The uh, pace of activity uh, with the comings and goings of visiting vehicles at the International Space Station, punctuated by the fact that next week, in less than a week, uh, the next crew to launch to the International Space Station, Alex Skorpochka, Jessica Mir of NASA, and the uh, United Arab Emirates spaceflight participant, Haza Ali Al-Mansouri, and their backups will be conducting their final qualification exams uh, next Thursday and Friday at the Gagarin Cosmonaut Training Center in Star City, Russia, outside of Moscow, uh, before they uh, venture uh, down to the Baikonur Cosmodrome uh, for final uh, pre-launch training. That launch is scheduled for September 25th. Uh, Moscow Station, Space to Ground One. Control R has been pressed, and the data inconsistency is still there. Copy that. Station Moscow. Go ahead. 
You'll need to close page 44 and then reselect it. In work. The uh, series of mid-course correction f engine firings by the uh, Soyuz MS-14 under automated control from its onboard computers continues. Uh, again, uh, fine-tuning its path to the International Space Station, now less than a thousand meters away. This view from uh, a camera in the balcony of the Russian Mission Control Center. Once again, uh, Russian flight controllers and monitoring uh, the progress of uh, the Soyuz MS-14 uh, to its final destination, uh, which will be the Poisk module on the space-facing side of the Russian segment of the station. After the undocking of uh, the Soyuz in two weeks for its uh, parachute-assisted landing in Kazakhstan, that Poisk module will also be the destination for the next Soyuz vehicle, the MS-15, which will be occupied by three crew members for a four-orbit, uh, six-hour journey from the Baikonur Cosmodrome to docking to the Poisk module on September 25th. Secondary source. So the student page is the backup, is the second backup. So, so basically what you're seeing on, on the page 44 on symbol is prime. Everything else is uh, secondary. Okay, so I'm going to restart the uh, page 44 on the symbol to make a car. 700 meters now separating uh, Soyuz from the International Space Station as the station flies directly over Senegal on the west coast of Africa, moving from southwest to northeast in an orbit inclined 51.6 degrees to either side of the equator. The Soyuz performance so far has been flawless with docking expected about 23 and a half minutes from now. And uh, with the International Space Station soon to fly into an approaching sunrise, you begin to see the station uh, come into better view from the uh, external camera on the MS-14 vehicle. You can get ready to execute command C-47. Copy, CS-47 is ready to be executed. Copy. Alexander, good morning. This is Vladimir Solovyev. How do you read me? Good morning, sir. I have you loud and clear. How are you? Yeah, good morning to you as well. From uh, the Russian Mission Control Center, a greeting uh, to the cosmonauts on board the International Space Station from the Russian Chief Flight Director, Vladimir Soloviev. There's our first view of uh, the approaching Soyuz vehicle, the unpiloted MS-14, with one uh, non-human occupant, the uh, Fyodor Skybot, sitting in the uh, center seat, the Soyuz commander's seat, in the descent module of the three-sectioned uh, Soyuz spacecraft. The fly-around uh, of the International Space Station is now underway, having just begun. This is, a, a, this is an operation that will take just a few minutes 
with the range now about 400 meters between Soyuz and the station. The fly-around angle of 67.6 .6 degrees to precisely align the forward docking port on the Soyuz with the Poisk module docking port. Three is the range. Forty-eight is the rate, and uh, we're getting steady visual, and we're in the middle of fly around right now. Copy all. And another view of the uh, Soyuz MS-14 from uh, a camera on the truss of the International Space Station. The fly around uh, continues in automated form. The two Russian cosmonauts on the station, uh, Alexei Ovchinin and Alexander Skvortsov, uh, in the Zvezda service module monitoring the approach of Soyuz at the ready in the event uh, a problem would, would occur to the uh, CORE's automated rendezvous system, uh, they could issue a command to abort this approach. However, uh, as you see, the engine firings, the small thrusters on the Soyuz uh, continuing to fine-tune the fly-around path of uh, the Soyuz vehicle. Everything continues to go as planned. There will be a station-keeping period coming up in just a few minutes uh, for a few seconds to allow the Russian flight controllers to assess the uh, relative position of the Soyuz uh, to the Poisk module docking port before the command is issued uh, to initiate the final approach prior to docking, which is scheduled about 17 and a half minutes from now. Two forty five is the range, O three nine is the rate. Everything is nominal. Copy. The image itself is not clear enough. So, so I'm basically going off of the data that I'm seeing on the overlay, and it's 233 and 028 for range and rate. Flying over uh, northern Algeria, about to cross uh, the Mediterranean. Great view of the Soyuz MS-14 that launched two days ago from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan. We're about 16 minutes away from docking. Everything proceeding uh, in perfect fashion. All of the Soyuz pre-programmed engine firings have gone off uh, as planned as uh, the Soyuz uh, is about to reach its final location for a brief period of station keeping. 
that uh, will be in advance of uh, the initiation of final approach for docking. Station visual is, not, is uh, steady. Uh, 214 and 017 for range and rate. Copy. We'll be able to uh, manipulate AGC in order to uh, um, improve the uh, image. Two minutes from now, once we go AOS uh, ground sites. Oh, it's not. It's fine now. Yeah, we're getting uh, out of Eclipse, so we're getting some uh, solar illumination, so we should be good for now. 200 meters is the range, Zero 01 is the rate. 20801. Station visual is steady, everything appears nominal. Copy. Soyuz and the International Space Station uh, about to cross Italy and then southern Europe on this uh, orbit of the Earth. A good view of uh, the engine firings uh, on the Soyuz vehicle, uh, punctuating uh, its completion of the fly around to basically put the brakes on that will uh, enable the Russian flight controllers to assess its position relative to the Poisk module docking port. AOS on the Russian ground site. So AGC is not available until we get there, so... Thank you, sir. Alexander copies. Sorry, did I just call you Alexei? I meant Alexander. Alexander, why don't you let us know as soon as you uh, see some improvements on the image quality? Illumination is perfect right now, sir. I think I think this should be uh, sufficient as far as the AGC uh, manipulations. All right, sounds good. Let's just leave it as is. Yeah, it's plenty good. Good visibility. Should be good to go. Docking port visual is stable, and the size is consistent, as I'm seeing it from the uh, service module standpoint. So I use less than 200 meters away from uh, the Poisk module, as you see uh, the core's automated rendezvous system conducting its corrections. Uh, to precisely align uh, the forward docking port of the unpiloted Soyuz with Poisk. We're expecting uh, the final approach to be initiated a short time from now, everything continuing to go well. Moscow Station, are you getting the image? A farm station, we are. Yes, 
Confirming a signal acquisition. There are uh, tests being conducted on both sets of uh, the Corps' automated rendezvous system, part of the test flight objectives for the uh, Soyuz MS-14. Copy, Moscow. Yeah, we're confirming acquisition. Copy. Alexander, everything should uh, quiet down noticeably. This is uh, Vladimir Solovyev again. We're transitioning back to the new course string. Yeah, I can I can see it already. Yeah, yeah we're going to go right into the fly around, and why don't you monitor extra attentively how things are going to proceed? Yeah, we should follow that with the uh, signal acquisition. I confirm that. This uh, attitude is towards the docking mode. Docking assembly now. Copy that. So after a series of uh, tests of both strings of the uh, Corps' automated rendezvous system, uh, the Soyuz is uh, now locked onto its target on the Poisk module that you see just uh, to the north of the crosshairs on this external engineering camera. The uh, Soyuz uh, 146 meters away. The Soyuz uh, currently uh, in the final roll maneuver that will uh, properly position the solar arrays for final approach and contact and capture. Hey, Alexander, uh, as far as what we're lacking on the roll, we're going to need another 60 degrees or 57 at least, so should please be patient. Yeah, it started at about 120 degrees. Visually speaking, how do you assess the range right now, station? Stand by. About two uh, squares, I'd say. Copy. Let me grab that range ruler. The onboard computers uh, testing the flying characteristics of the Soyuz MS-14. Again, all part of the. Uh, flight test objectives for this unpiloted vehicle as we stand by for the initiation of final approach. Around 150 meters in my assessment is the range right now, Moscow. Copy. Yes, 
We're in the approach mode, uh, accelerating. 066 is the rate right now. With final approach having been initiated, uh, the Soyuz less than 100 meters away, closing at a rate of just under a half a meter per second. The Poisk module docking port is uh, just uh, to the left and just above the center of this cross-haired view from the external engineering camera. The International Space Station crossing the border between Russia and Kazakhstan. 110, 115 meters and two squares from the service module. Copy, Alexander. We're in station keeping again. Moscow, can you confirm that you're getting a stable video right now? That's a firm. The range is approximately 110 meters, Moscow. Mm -hmm. Copy. The uh, CORE's automated rendezvous system on the Soyuz vehicle is currently uh, working uh, to lock itself back on to the Poisk module docking port. Range is stable at about 100, uh, 110. Alexander, can you continue to visually monitor and let us know if the uh, station size changes? That's precisely what I'm doing right now, Moscow. Copy. Keep your commentary regular, please. The uh, cosmonauts in the Zvezda service module, Alexei Ovchinin and Alexander Skvortsov, monitoring 
uh, the Soyuz vehicle as it uh, continues uh, to attempt uh, to have its core's automated rendezvous system lock on to the Poisk module in this final stage of its approach. The Soyuz uh, is sitting at a range of about 100 meters away from the station. Two point five squares is the size is the diameter of the service module right now and the ninety meters is the range. Copy station. Two and a half squares, so about ninety meters. And stable. Flying over northern China near the border with Mongolia, the Soyuz MS-14 uh, continues uh, to gather data automatically for its onboard computers from its core's automated rendezvous system. As we stand by uh, for the Russian flight controllers uh, to, to determine uh, where we are at with the Soyuz MS-14, and whether or not final approach will be initiated for its automated docking to the Poisk module. Okay, so the uh, solar arrays are, are out of the frame. I'm not seeing them. Station solar arrays. I'm oh, seeing them again now. Copy both. We appear to be station keeping right now. It's hard to assess the range because I don't see the uh, service module in the frame right now. So we're kind of going around the edge of it. Hard to assess the range. Copy all, Alexander. Station Moscow, we're getting no video right now. Alexander, this is Vladimir. Can you assess the range? I don't see the station right now. We're trying to uh, see it through the uh, DC one. Yeah, go through the window. Look through the windows. Yeah, we're trying to do it right now. We're trying to track it down uh, visually. Sir, we're trying to. Yeah, just see where it's uh, where it's right now. Where it is right now. Yeah, we're making every attempt we can uh, think of to uh, try to track it down visually, right now. Thirteen, thirteen, we're trying to use it. 
Illuminator. Uh, we're using Windows 13 and 12 yeah, for that Christina, purpose. Uh, no. We just want to let you know that uh, the course is having difficulty locking onto the target, and we wanted to make sure that you were awake. And you have a go to open windows for situational awareness if needed. We copy, thank you. Any correction on our part needed at this time? No correction. We're getting no visual uh, of the spacecraft through Windows 12 or 13. Copy that. We're going to try to look out of the DC-1 and from the crew quarters as well, real quick. Alexander. Alexander, you are go to send command CS-47. Getting ready to execute CS-47, Moscow. CS-47 has been sent. Copy. Station Houston on two, Soyuz is aborting. Hey, Alexander. Go ahead. This is Vladimir. Uh, it's in the middle of a, an abort right now. Are you seeing? We're trying to uh, get a visual on the spacecraft. We can't see it. It appears to be backing away. At least that's the impression we're getting. Okay, top, sir. But we get no visual. This is Mission Control Houston. As you heard, uh, spacecraft communicator Tamara York here in Mission Control informing the crew on board the station that the approach of the uh, Soyuz MS-14 to the International Space Station has been aborted. The uh, command issued by uh, the cosmonauts in the Zvezda service module, Soyuz now backing away to a safe distance from the station to allow Russian flight controllers to assess uh, the next course of action, this occurring after the Soyuz encountered an issue of unspecified origin uh, with its core's automated rendezvous system uh, uh, unable to lock on to the target on the Poisk module docking port of the International Space Station. It's in the LDLH. And the abort uh, command uh, from in front of the station. At the station commander Alexei Ovchinin issued at 12.36 a.m. Central Time. 40 meters below the station. Station Houston range is increasing. How copy, Moscow? Copy. Russian Chief Flight Director uh, Vladimir Soloviev has told the cosmonauts on board the station that uh, the decision to abort uh, the approach and to back away uh, will enable them uh, to assess the uh, situation with the uh, Soyuz Corps' automated rendezvous system before another attempt is made, but it's not clear when that would be. And a reminder, uh, just like a, unlike a Progress uh, cargo ship, the Soyuz uh, does not uh, have a Toru automated uh, backup system, does not have a backup system, a telerobotically operated backup system to the Corps automated rendezvous system because when a crew is on board, if the Corps system uh, encounters a problem such as the one we've just seen, the uh, Soyuz commander would take over the flying of the Soyuz vehicle, but in this test flight, with no crew on board, uh, the Corps' automated rendezvous system was the only rendezvous system available with an abort capability available for the cosmonauts on board the station. That uh, abort was issued uh, just a few minutes ago at 12.36 a.m. Central Time after the Soyuz MS-14 encountered an unspecified problem with its Corps' automated system, uh, having an issue locking onto the Poisk docking port uh, system uh, for a final approach initiation for docking. Station Houston on to any available U.S. crew. Uh, 
просьба оценить, уходит ли корабль от Франции. Using whatever visual aids you have, windows uh, included, to see if the uh, spacecraft is backing away from the station right now. Copy, Yuri. Alexei is trying to take a picture of it right now, and 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 he, what he's trying to do that out of his MRM two, and uh, actually he's saying that uh, he's lost the visual of it from MRM two, as we speak. Yep, cannot see it from MRM two, although before he. Call down its position uh, with respect to the station from MRM2. No, MRM2. He can no longer see it from MRM2 window. I'll oh, copy. Copy all, Alexander. Go ahead, on two. While we have you, uh, we're going to run a block November on the WHC. And we copy you around block November. And there's a situation awareness. Uh, this happened last night also. We had to run it twice before they cleared the pre tweet bad call. And we copy, and if you have to run it a second time after it happens again, we'll need to add some water and we'll need to get you a procedure reference. This is Mission Control Houston, uh, flying just to the northeast of the Philippines. And, uh, we'll the uh, Soyuz MS-14 unpiloted uh, spacecraft that had uh, enjoyed a flawless uh, two days of automated flying towards an expected docking to the Poisk module of the International Space Station in this test flight. Uh, was required to have its approach aborted a few minutes ago at 12.36 a.m. Central Time, 1.36 a.m. Eastern Time, after the Soyuz encountered an unspecified problem uh, with its core's automated rendezvous system, unable to lock on properly to the Poisk uh, module uh, docking uh, port for which it uh, had intended to link up to a short time ago. So we're standing by for further words from the Russian flight control team that's in charge of tonight's operation to see what the, the next course of action will be for the Soyuz vehicle. Look on to the first uh, time we were in block November, it didn't clear it, so we're waiting for instructions. You have a go to run it a second time. I'll be running it a second time. This is Mission Control Houston. Just to recap, uh, the view here of the Soyuz MS-14 unpiloted spacecraft that was launched from the Baikonur Cosmodrome two days ago on a 2.1A booster 
on a test flight to not only assess the compatibility of the Soyuz with that booster rocket for future launches of crews beginning next spring on the uh, Soyuz 2.1A booster, but uh, to assess uh, upgrades uh, to the uh, telemetry uh, and motion control systems of the Soyuz spacecraft for future application. The uh, flight of the Soyuz, uh, pre-programmed and automated, uh, had been flawless up until the time uh, that the Soyuz entered its fly-around of the station at a distance of about 400 meters. It closed to within about 100 meters or so of the station and then encountered an unspecified problem with uh, its core's automated rendezvous system, both sets, uh, ba basically a prime and a backup string of systems, unable uh, to properly lock on to the Poisk module docking port. After uh, several tries at uh, switching uh, from one system on the core's automated rendezvous uh, hardware to another, uh, the decision was made by the Russian flight control uh, team under the direction of lead flight director, chief flight director Vladimir Soloviev to have uh, Alexander Skvortsov and uh, Alexei Ovchinin issuing an, an abort command that came at 12.36 a.m. Central Time, 1.36 a.m. Eastern Time, and the Soyuz, as you can see, is now backed away to a safe distance from the station uh, while the Russian flight control teams assess the next course of action. We are getting we are getting video from one of the USOS external cameras. Getting smaller and smaller size wise. Which way is it uh, backing away though? Is it uh, forward of the station, backward of the station? Can you uh, kind of tell us a little bit about that if you know? Suspension. Um, we are ready with the, for the number of the procedure. By the way, the the second flash. Well, when we were getting the video from the ground uh, of the ground, we could tell that it was uh, flying forward of the station. And right now, you know, we've got a space between the spacecraft and the station, so it makes it hard, if not impossible, to assess that. Copy. Yeah, I see the, the camera is off right now. What do I do with the MPEG and the Tebaco strings? The situation is being analyzed. Stand by and get ready to uh, put into work whatever recommendations get formulated by us. Okay, we're not turning anything off. Standing by. This is Alexei with a question. While we have no video, maybe I should go ahead and uh, terminate the video recording. What do you say, Moscow? That will be a question to address with the main control room. Please station our recommendation uh, is to uh, shut off the uh, video, the MPEG. Copy. In work. So, Lexi, with the question, what are the uh, further actions required from the crew? We're still uh, formulating our recommendations. Stand by. Copy.
экипаж ответит все по Москве. Station Moscow. Отвечаю. Ahead, safety, um, сейчас я прийти передаю со связи к главному оператору нижнего зала. We're going to hand you over to the main control room. So from here on out, you'll be talking and getting all your recommendations from the главный and the main control room. We are going to have to say goodbye to you right now and sign off. Копи, Юрий. МКСОФ Москва, канал СГ-1, проверка связи. Леша, как видишь? Стейшн Москва, Space to Ground 1, for come check. Алексей, как ты видишь меня? Слава, ты очень хорошо. Ты громко и слава, как мне? Да, это очень хорошо. Ты тоже так. Запись, я так понимаю, отключили, да? Запись я выключил, да. Ты отключил рекординг? Да. Хорошо, спасибо. Окей, копи, спасибо. Леш, на связи, слышишь меня? Да, ты там? 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 from AFE-2's window, and it's uh, located a little above the station, I guess. It's hard to uh, put a number on the range, though. But we see it, it's taken up about one-third of the window size. One-third of the window size. Copy. This is Mission Control Houston. The uh, Soyuz MS-14 unpiloted spacecraft in the International Space Station flying uh, to the northeast of the coast of Australia. The uh, Soyuz uh, aborted its approach. Actually, it was the cosmonauts on board the station that issued a command to the Soyuz to abort its approach some uh, 27 minutes ago after uh, the Soyuz had problems locking its CORS automated rendezvous system signal onto the Poisk docking port on the space-facing side of the Russian segment of the station. The decision has been made by Russian flight controllers not to attempt another rendezvous tonight. It is unclear as to what the next uh, course of action will be as uh, the Russian flight control team assesses what may have caused a problem with the Corps' automated rendezvous system. But the Soyuz now has backed away to a safe distance from the International Space Station. At no time was the crew in any danger. This was pre-planned without a backup Toru system in place. 24-hour safe trajectory. It's moving at one meter per second, and it is outside the approach ellipsoid. Spacecraft communicator Tamara York uh, informing Luca Parmitano aboard the International Space Station that the Soyuz that you see here in this image uh, has exited the neighborhood of the International Space Station and is on a safe trajectory, basically a racetrack trajectory for 24 hours, that if uh, the Russian flight control team solves the issue as to what caused the problem with the core system, could attempt a reapproach uh, in 24 hours, but that has not yet been determined. The Russian flight control team currently looking at the data uh, as to what uh, happened uh, to the core's automated rendezvous system that caused uh, the cosmonauts on board the station, Alexander Skortsov and Alexei Ovchinin, the station commander, to issue a command to abort the approach of the Soyuz at a distance of about 100 meters or so at 12.36 a.m. Central Time. The spacecraft is about 70 to 100 meters above the station, and it's like it's headed towards the docking port again, so it's uh, like it's re-approaching. Copy, Alexei. This is Alexander. When I first uh, got a glimpse of it, I did have that impression that it was uh, coming back towards the station, too. Okay, copy that, guys. So, it's 
docking port is uh, facing uh, the, the station docking port, and in that uh, attitude, it's about 50 to 70 meters away, and it's uh, reapproaching the MRM2 docking axis. Copy. Continue monitoring and keep your uh, commentary as regular and as complete as possible. So keep in mind that the station is uh, rotating right now as well. Copy. The International Space Station is being maneuvered back uh, to its pre-docking orientation. All systems on board the station are in good shape. The crew was never in any uh, danger during this approach. This was thought out well in advance that without a backup telerobotically operated rendezvous system on the Soyuz vehicle, because there is never one on a crewed vehicle, uh, in the event of a Corps problem, uh, the station commander would take over the flying of the Soyuz, but with no crew on board for this test flight of the MS-14 spacecraft, it was all up to the cosmonauts on board uh, with the capability, as was executed a short time ago, to execute an abort command that sent the Soyuz uh, backing away from the station to a safe trajectory. The uh, station is phasing above and behind the ISS, basically on a racetrack trajectory, that would have it reapproach the station uh, in 24 hours if the problems with the uh, Corps' automated rendezvous system can be solved by the Russian flight control team. That decision has not yet been made while the Russian flight controllers assess the data and uh, the uh, systems on board the Soyuz MS-14. This is Mission Control Houston in the field of view, the Soyuz MS-14 unpiloted uh, spacecraft on its test flight to the International Space Station. Uh, just to recap, uh, 24 minutes ago, the uh, cosmonauts on board the station, Commander Alexei Ovchinin and Flight Engineer Alexa Alexander Skvortsov, issued an abort command from the Zvezda service module that uh, prevented uh, the Soyuz MS-14 from uh, continuing uh, its approach to the International Space Station. That command issued uh, when the Soyuz was about 100 meters or so uh, from the station at the uh, back end of its fly around that uh, would have precisely aligned uh, the forward docking probe of the Soyuz spacecraft to the Poisk module docking port on the Russian segment of the International Space Station. An unspecified issue cropped up uh, with the Corps' automated rendezvous system, both strings of that system that prevented a, uh, a firm lock-on uh, to uh, the Poisk module. And after uh, basically searching the sky uh, for the right lock-on to uh, the comparable uh, Corps' uh, system on the station side of the docking interface, 
uh, the abort command was issued. The Soyuz has now backed away to a safe distance, uh, basically on a racetrack trajectory above and behind the station that uh, would possibly enable it uh, to return to the station for another rendezvous attempt in 24 hours. However, it has not yet been determined by the Russian flight control team as to whether or not they will attempt another rendezvous attempt uh, in 24 hours or subsequent to that. At no time was the station crew in any danger. The uh, board command was built into this test flight specifically because a backup telerobotically operated rendezvous system is not uh, part of a manned Soyuz vehicle. Uh, in the event of a course failure with a crew on board, the station commander uh, seated in the center seat of the Soyuz vehicle in the descent module would take over the manual flying of the Soyuz for a docking. The Toru system only exists on unpiloted progress cargo ships, or in this case, in this Soyuz MS-14 configuration without a crew on board. The rest of the flight of the Soyuz had been perfectly executed from its launch from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan two days ago up until the time that it reached uh, the neighborhood of the station and again its uh, approach to the station aborted at a distance of about a hundred meters.
This is Mission Control Houston, uh, Russian flight controllers uh, in this view from a balcony camera of the Russian flight control room at the Russian Mission Control Center outside of Moscow, currently evaluating the data that they saw as uh, the Soyuz MS-14 unpiloted spacecraft uh, approached uh, for docking to the International Space Station's Poisk module and then was forced uh, to have its approach aborted at uh, 12.36 a.m. Central Time, 1.36 a.m. Eastern Time. Uh, the cosmonauts in the Zvezda service module, Station Commander Alexei Ovchinin and Flight Engineer Alexander Skvortsov uh, issuing the command uh, to uh, have the Soyuz back away to a safe distance from the station. The uh, Soyuz uh, has uh, now backed away to a phasing position above and behind the station, well out of the neighborhood of the station, on a so-called racetrack trajectory, a safe uh, trajectory uh, that would bring the Soyuz back around 24 hours from now. But whether or not it will be permitted to, to make another rendezvous attempt at that time uh, is yet to be determined, depending on how the Russian flight control team evaluates uh, the data that they saw and the problems incurred uh, with the Corps' automated rendezvous system, both sets of that Corps' system that uh, were unable to properly lock on to the docking port target on the Poisk module on the space-facing side of the Russian segment of the station. You said it was at about a range of two to three hundred meters. Uh, it was below. And uh, we're in eclipse, uh, we're fully in eclipse, so, you know, even though we had been able to see it until a little while ago, now that we're lacking on the illumination side, we can't. Okay. Uh, I've got an update for Alexei, the radiogram with the, with the uh, PL tank for the United Arab Emirates. The answers have been uh, sent to the email address. I not only just got them, but I'm also uh, reading them, and I'm very grateful that you did send those to me. Copy. No problem.
Ну, то есть, это Москва, там, или СГ-1. Station Moscow, Space to Ground 1. Go ahead. I'd like to wish you a great day. I'm going to hand you back to uh, Nikolai Lepadov. Thank you, Slava. Hey, fellas. How are you, Alexei and Alexander? I got back, and let's get started on our path. Hey, Nikolai, how are you? Greetings. Hey, Nikolai, can wait. This is Selovy. Um, Alexander, Alexei, are you there? Yes, of course, sir. We are. Right. We're right here. Well, here's the G. Obviously, we've got a lot of investigating to do. The night going from Sunday to Monday is our next attempt. So. Uh, we're going to skip a 24 cycle and then reattempt. And so, for the, the uh, course B signal uh, amplifier was causing some issues. And the signal amplifier and it uh, communicates with the uh, instrumentation compartment, where which fits as close to Alexander's. So, so what we would like to do now. Test. We would like to do a test. So we're going to use the we're going to use the uh, signal amplifier that you use, so we consider it to be fully nominal. So we're going to use that from the chorus string in the instrumentation compartment of your SOIS. And if everything goes well, which it should, because uh, it hasn't been that long since you got to the station. So we're going to ask you to remove that amplifier unit. It shouldn't be that hard. We will have a specialist sitting right by the Glavny side. He will walk you through uh, whatever you need to do as far as getting it uh, dismantled and brought up. So that signal amplifier will need to be moved from the instrumentation compartment and stowed in the place of this uh, suspect signal amplifier that has been uh, giving us a disservice in MRM2, and we're going to stow it there. Since we're not going to be able to do a full full test without the spacecraft, so we're just going to sign off on this no, uh, on this amplifier as being nominal, and the quote-unquote bad amplifier, we're going to try to ask you to uh, put it in the place of the one you removed from the uh, Soyuz, from your Soyuz, Alexander. So basically a amplifier swap, and we're going to do a closed-loop test there to make sure that that amplifier is the bad branch on the fall tree, because we're expecting if the amplifier is to blame that, you know, that test will be, uh, will fail. And so, and so we're going to, in the meantime, we're going to start building the timeline and beefing it out in, uh, in preparation for the upcoming reattempted ducking. How clear is everything I've just told you? Yep. The logic and the sequence of events is perfectly clear. We're going to be looking forward to getting, uh, our radiograms and everything? That's right. We'll get everything ready, obviously. So that's, uh, in a nutshell, what we've got going on. Next question. Are you guys uh, seeing the stories right now? Because... Uh, based on our ballistics, it should be uh, approaching a safe distance away from the station, but getting a video confirmation, a visual confirmation of that will also be used. Uh, Mr. Slovyev, you walked right through a uh, handover. So we just got the tail end of what you said to see if it's far away from us. I went through all the windows, and I'm not seeing it in any of the windows uh, in the Russian segment. Neither can I see it from Alexander's Soyuz. We did before, but no longer. Once we're out of Eclipse, we're going to give it a lot, another look and see if we can see it. 
Нет, ну, понятное дело, что на свету ты как бы российского сегмента, с американского ты чего? Why would you limit yourself to the Russian segment? Why don't you go and check out uh, the views from the uh, USOS windows? I don't know which ones you would uh, use first, but yeah, it's above the station. So we need to look through the windows that are facing forward, uh, facing upwards, as opposed to all the USOS windows facing uh, downwards. Okay, copy that. Anyway, well, we stopped at about 60 meters. That's as close as we got. And I, I think we got the same numbers or similar numbers from you guys. Exactly. Yep. 60 meters is not far away, but uh, that's okay. Yeah, now it's backing away. Backing away. It's such a shame that we were not able to uh, use Toro. We would grab it and bring it in. Yep. Fortunately, this is the kind of stripped down soils we're dealing with. We've got no Toro. Anyway, I'm confident that everything will go well. Uh, tell me something. Do you kind of know where all the course hardware is located because the amplifier obviously will be close by? More or less, sir. But a radiogram or a bunch of photographs would be nice. Oh, yeah, you'll get all of that. No doubt about that. You'll get all of that. All the connector numbers, everything will be uh, delivered to you in due time. Basically, specialists will be sitting uh, right by the главный side. So, you know, we need to get going because of the time constraints we're dealing with, so obviously we won't be... But again, you know, the logic and the sequence of events are crystal clear. Staying by for further recommendations. Okay, guys. Sounds good. Back to Nikolai. This is Mission Control Houston. You have been listening to a conversation between Russian flight controllers of the Russian Mission Control Center in Karyov that you see on your screen, uh, the large uh, Russian uh, flight control room for the International Space Station on the outskirts of Moscow. Go ahead, Alexei. There will be some deltas coming in on today's timeline. So as soon as you have those, to run them by us. Yep, as soon as I get a good grip on what's going on and what uh, changes will be incorporated, once I get, good, get a good, good grip on that, I will, uh, first thing I'll do is run them by you. Okay, copy. We're going to enjoy our lunch. In the meantime, we'll look forward to getting your uh, updates. Precisely. Talk to you soon. The uh, Russian uh, flight controllers in Korolev telling uh, cosmonauts Alexei Ovchinin, the Expedition 60 commander and flight engineer Alexander Skvartsov, that uh, the early look at the data following the aborted approach of the Soyuz MS-14 unpiloted spacecraft to the International Space Station uh, within the past hour, they are theorizing that uh, a problem exists with the core system on the station side that basically bounces uh, signals back and forth between uh, the Soyuz core's automated rendezvous system uh, to uh, enable the Soyuz to hone in on its docking target. In this case, the port of call was the Poisk module docking port on the station space-facing side of the Russian segment. Okay. Radiogram 2871, as part of your source maintenance uh, allocation, you'll have to activate the distillation hardware. The uh, early look at the data, according to uh, the conversation that you heard uh, just a few moments ago between the Russian flight controllers and the cosmonauts on the station, indicated uh, that they are considering having uh, the crew on board the station replace an amplifier 
a component associated with the uh, CORE's automated rendezvous system on the station side of that automated rendezvous interface. After it is replaced and tested, they uh, could attempt could attempt another rendezvous uh, at the time allocated for social maintenance.